Welcome back to the Backwoods Lounge. Yeah. yeah. Backwoods, yeah. backstage. Backwoods, yeah. backstage. But one we music lounging fest. at one music fest. It's yeah. lit. And I feel like we got a real treat. Because we got a, a special guest that we didn't even know was going to be here today. But I did know he was in the city giving food reviews. Got the whole town shook. Sure. I know him and his wife going to go home and, and wonder, I don't know what they eat down there. These people going to starve to death. I don't know how y'all do it. I don't know how y'all do it, bro. <laughs> but we have, sure. at this point, world-renowned mm. food critic. Yeah. Food honor, reviewer. Honor. Honor. Yes. honor. Uh, and his lovely wife, none other than Miss Keith. I mean, Mr. fucking Keith Lee. <laughs> I'm smooth. sorry. I was yes, thinking Keith and Miss Running. Yes, and sir. Ronnie yes, Lee. Sir. Yes, that's sir. what that's God what is I amazing. Mean. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I can't even put this in the words. I can't even put this in yes, words. Yes, you can. I can't. Because <laughs> everybody's waiting. But so, again, this is one of the things I've wanted to do. I don't have a bucket list. I don't really have many things I want to do for real. But talking to you, DC and Chico Bean, the pandemic, she was pregnant, that's all I would watch. All I would watch. I would really? Watch nothing, I swear. I would not lie to you. Brother. When you ask to do this, I'm like, I don't do interviews with nobody. I'm a very quiet, sitting with my family, sit in the corner, eat food kind of person. But with you, absolutely. And T-Pain just walked off the stage. Gotta do that. That's Mandatory. First of all, man, I gotta salute you for the good things that you are doing Love. out here for these people. You blessing people left and right, Love. and you and you doing it organically. I appreciate it. And, you. and your opinion matters, I appreciate man. Y'all. And that's so dope yeah. because we've seen like, especially at the time when you really first start doing the food thing, and and you know like we had the pandemic and people were trying to recover from that and just by you stopping through and letting people know that you like it and support it. You brought so many people back and you've given back so much of your blessing and that's why you're going to always be blessed, brother. Look, man, I believe in God. I'm just a vessel. And I've said that and I'm going to continue to say it. I just eat food. I eat food. I pray. I stay with my family. I don't do nothing else. Everything that happened past that is meant to happen. God just put me in a place that I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be there, and how I'm supposed to be there. That's why I'm sitting right here talking to you. That's why it's amazing because, like, how does it feel to be chosen by the people to be one of those ones that they love and support the way that they do, man? Surreal. (laughs) Surreal, not even a word. (laughs) When I tell you, every day I wake up, I be looking in the mirror like, I tell her all the time, we Craig and Day Day. (laughs) How the hell everybody talking about, oh, it's Keith, it's Keith. I'm like, I'm, re- I'm really just eating food. If only you yeah. knew. Like, I don't be shooting content. I don't call my, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a content creator. I'm not an influencer. I'm literally just a vessel of God. But I was going to say, how, what made you stumble into that? If you weren't creating content already prior to, like, mm-hmm. doing the food content, mm-hmm. what, were, what made you be like, you know what, I'm going to really just record this and let everybody know? So I've always had very severe social anxiety. Really? I've been a pro- terrible. So I've been a professional fighter since 2015 or 2016. And I've always just, so I always thought I was gonna be a professional fighter my whole life. So I wrestled all through high school. I went straight out, the, uh, out of high school, straight to being a professional fighter. I fought in Bellator for three years. And with fighting, I don't do nothing but punch people in the face for a living. So I don't have to be friendly and talk and go out and, and mingle with people and socialize with people. I can literally just go to the gym, go home, and that's it. So that was my daily routine. Uh, and then I was doing fight interviews and I was so skittish. I was skittish, I was nervous. I wouldn't look at nobody. I was sweating, it ruined my whole day. So I vividly remember during the pandemic, I remember asking her like, what can I do about this social anxiety? Like, I don't wanna go out nowhere. I don't wanna talk to nobody. I don't wanna go around nobody. I'm doing these interviews and I'm hating it. And I was like, but that's a super vital part of the game. It, Cause it's one thing to just be fighting, but you really gotta be making your name known, especially when it comes to social media nine days. So I was like, I'ma just set up my phone. There's an app called TikTok that just came out. I'm like, I'ma just set up my phone and I'ma just record myself and act like it's a thousand people in front of me. And I'ma just talk to the camera as if I was sitting in a room full of people. And it just started taking off. First, it was literally just me cooking, uh, cause I used to cook nonstop. I used to cook like four or five meals a day. So I was just cooking. She was pregnant at the time. I was so like, I was y'all eating. Her. I'm eating. You yeah. cooking four, five times Look, a day. Oh, yeah. I was pregnant. Oh, so, pregnant. I was hungry. so I literally would just cook for her. Anything she was craving, I would make it. And anything that she wanted, I would go get it. And that was just all my content. So I, I think I had gained like 1 million or like 1.2 million followers. And this was last year in November. 
at that point I had like 1.2, 1.3 million followers. And uh, People versus Food, which is a YouTube channel, they reached out to me, it was like, hey, we want you to come on, and they do food reviews. So I asked her, I'm like, what would I post on my page that make people from their page actually come and follow me and not just come and watch? And she was like, post food reviews. You love eating food, you love, we critique it anyway. So right. I'm in a crib and I'm eating just my food, and I'm like, it's like a seven, it's like an eight. And she like, bro, just do that and just turn the camera on. So I literally started doing it. I was like, I'm gonna post one food review every day until we get on People vs. Food. We did that in November. We got on People vs. Food in December. By December, we went from 1.2 to 3.8 million followers wow. within that crazy. month. And That's crazy. it was insane. And it just like, it, when I say we was doing TikTok from 2020 to 2022, or yeah, we'll be in 2023, so yeah, 2022. So two years it took me to get to 1.2 within from November to now, I'm at 14.1. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. Hey man, you God just got recently you, had a birthday too, didn't you? I did, I did, I just turned 27. Now I was yeah. gonna ask you this, cause you had, <laughs> uh -huh. you got this man, he out here crazy. getting all these followers. Crazy. He was on the internet crying last man, week. Man, like yes. a baby. <laughs> like and a it baby. was, and you, and then it's like, <laughs> They, the internet was like, he's crying. And then you came back like, so? Look, yeah. I'm so, happy. Yes. So Nobody's used to seeing people doing, be happy for real. When I tell you it's crazy, since we've been doing this, we've been able to raise over $40,000 for a restaurant owner who had cancer in less than 24 hours. Yes. We've been able to raise over $60,000 for a food truck. His name was Mr. Gary in under 24 hours. Yes. Uh, we, I ate this chocolate bar and I told people it was good because it was really good to me. The lady was a teacher for 20 years. She was able to retire 48 hours after the review was posted. Yeah. All of this amazing things that we've been blessed yeah. enough to do and all of these things, all these spaces we've been able to be in and the shade room only posted me twice this year and both times it was me crying and one, it was me crying at the BET Awards because again, last year I was barely making ends meet and I say barely, I mean like we was getting food stamps. I was making, with fighting I was making maybe like a thousand per fight, two thousand dollars per fight, and I was making maybe five, six hundred dollars with TikTok. So I'm barely making it, and we got kids. So to be here now at the BET Wars, talking to y'all and being in spaces like this, of course I'm a cry. Yeah. yeah, I'm a real person. I'm I not what that. people think I am. I'm literally exactly what you, what I portray is exactly who I am. I don't live under no mask. I don't live under no character. I'm a real nigga. Well, it sounds yeah. like I'm you work nigga. past your social anxiety. Oh, when I tell because you. Because you're out here keeping it real and involved. When I tell you, so again, I think everything happens the way it's supposed to. My sister, my wife, my mom-in-law, my kids, I go everywhere with them. That's the way I'm able to be up here talking to y'all. Those are my social batteries. They plug in my social. If it wasn't for them, I'm in and out. I don't go nowhere by myself. Yeah. I'm getting better. Don't get me wrong. I'm getting a lot better. But me, two years ago, he hella proud of me right now. I'm telling you, he's so proud of me. He's like, you sitting on stage talking in front of people? I, w I used to be a hermit, I'm telling you, bro. Man, it's so crazy, the, the spots that you picked to go and mm -hmm. eat. Cause it's like, it's a few of them places where it's like, I know you went to this one burger spot with like an old black dude. I was like, I, I knew that food was hidden. <laughs> yeah. like, well, I wish you could just mail me yeah. some shit sometime. Yeah. <laughs> That's Mr. Gary you talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. When I tell you I don't shoot content, I mean it because I don't have no set up schedule. I don't have no people in my ear telling me where to go or what to do. I literally just follow what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. And you go off referrals a lot too. So yeah. I either go off referrals or uh, like emails, DMs. But a lot of times, like so yesterday, for example, I literally was in a car and I wasn't going through no emails, no DMs or nothing. I seen all the backlash all the other restaurants was getting like the Atlanta Breakfast Club, uh, Real Milk and Honey. It was getting crazy on Twitter. I'm talking about we was trending all last night, all, all off of like, these restaurants need to shut down, these rules is crazy. So I'm like, okay, I, we was sitting in the car, I'm like, I want to go to a place that has good customer service, good food, but don't nobody know about them. I was like, that's literally what I want and I'll be set for this trip. Five minutes later, I got an email from a place called The Real Dining Experience. Yeah. We pulled up, nobody was in there but us. The guy who was our waiter, the nicest man I met since we've been in here. Yeah. The food was amazing. The customer service was amazing. And I literally asked for it before we went there. So mm -hmm. when I tell you everything happens by divine timing for me and everything happens the way it's supposed to, I'm just a line, bro. Bro, I don't know yeah, if you've seen it, but Twitter is going Nuts. crazy right now that you are <laughs> in Atlanta. They're like, Nuts. you know how bad your customer service got to be for a Jamaican restaurant to win best customer when service? When I tell you, bro, I got something in the vault. Hey, man. Yeah. That's going to light Atlanta on is, fire. You're not saying nothing that we haven't been saying as residents. I just, mm -hmm. I tweeted the other week, 
that 10 chicken wings cost $24 around here. More it's than that. Crazy. <laughs> More, you can't sit nowhere. You can't yes. order nowhere. You can't dine in. You can't take out. You can't even order food at a restaurant nine days. See, How do you do we, this? When we was at home, though, it was good things. It was like, come to Atlanta, and, like, the food is good. Man. And they hyped us up, and then when we got here, I'm like, okay, somebody lying. Yeah, somebody oh. not telling the truth. <laughs> but again, that, that's one thing that's real big with me. Yeah. Everybody's experience is going to be different. Everybody mm -hmm. taste buds is different. Everybody's going to have a different experience. So if you want to go to any of these restaurants, I encourage you to go and make your own opinion. I never want to believe or believe anybody's opinion is the end all be all. That's why I, I always tell people. I got a few spots I'm going to send you. How long are you here? Uh, we leave tomorrow. Leaving tomorrow. All right. Uh -huh. For the next trip, uh -huh. hit me and we're going to put the, okay. we're going to get with the city Bet. and we'll put the list together. I told you, I'm only coming back for you, DC, and Chico. I'm not coming back for nobody else. That works for us. Bet. That <laughs> works we got a lot us. of black owned restaurants in Atlanta. And you know, sometimes black owned restaurants get the worst. Bid when it comes to customer service. Now, I feel like he graded them on a real lenient scale. I just feel like the places that he might have went mm -hmm. ain't the places that we would have went. Yeah, we but might that's have. the thing. But how do you, I'm asking how do you, locals. I'm asking like they. I'm going see, to comments. See, that's the thing I'm about to, it. We. I don't know. I don't feel like it's different you're kind of locals let, to. I ain't Atlanta. making excuses. I'm just uh -huh. feeling like you might have to just. Come back mm -hmm. and let us take you to the spots that we go. But you got to realize, you are the thousand person that told me that today. So what? But then you the thousand person that told me that today. But right. So that but issue, the chances are the same other thousand people who uh -huh. told you that are going to take you to the same place. But the issue, it could be like, you say, oh, we got to go here because this is the best spot. And then I go, and it's going to be people in the comments like, you should have went here. You supposed but to go here. But what I'm saying, yeah. say, for instance, you go to American Deli. Uh -huh. But you don't go to the right one. The one so now you're going to think right. all of them right, 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 are trash right. if we you. all go to the same two or three, that even though it's Chicago. 30 of them. That's why I don't tell people. If, if I do like a local chain restaurant that everybody know about, I never tell people what location I go to for that reason. Because everybody got their favorite location, a better location. Because even in Atlanta, if you go to the Waffle House tonight after you leave this, uh -huh. if you go to the wrong Waffle House, <laughs> it's going to make the whole <laughs> city serious. look yeah. crazy. Because yeah. yeah. we know the Waffle House that we go to. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And thanks. they don't even cook the food before they clean. <laughs> they clean the grill first. Right. That's what happened when you went to that one, uh, was it the real milk and honey? They was cleaning, the doors open, people were still eating. They I'll give you a trick, being though. Sprayed. Wait, it's crazy. Like, if you do want to hit the Waffle House, or you just, you might just stop I really just want to go to mom and pop shots. Don't go to one if the cook not standing outside. <laughs> smoking a cigarette. If he ain't, great. If he ain't smoking or on smoking, the phone, yeah. just <laughs> ride to another one. Trust me. And it gotta be a little For dirty. Sure. If I your waitress it. not taking a nap <laughs> in her car it. in yeah. front of the Waffle House, don't eat at that one. Your yeah. Waffle House flow kind of gotta be a little sticky. That's understand. how you know it's gonna be a little good. Syrup. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Understand. But I was gonna say as a food critic, how you know a restaurant gonna hit? Like we know that for the Waffle House. Like if mm -hmm. it's somebody sitting outside smoking at a flow sticky, for this sure. shit finna hit. How do you know a restaurant gonna it's hit? It's so different. Like right now we on tour, right. uh, and we going to every city. And, Where you at next? Uh, can I tell them? You want me to drop it? Go ahead. No, I, 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 no. Right. We'll oh, drop one. Yeah, we got, we got five on the list. Him. We got five on the list, so we'll tell you one. I'm not going to tell you what order we're going to go in, but one of them is D.C. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 one of them is okay. D.C. Yeah, but we got, a, we got a lot in. And again, so the main thing that we're doing right now, and back in March, we got reached out to a bunch of TV producing shows, and like they like, oh, we want you on Netflix, we want you on Hulu, we want you on all of this. But I'm very intentional. I'm very big on the intent, and I'm very big on my family has to be included or I'm not doing nothing. Right. So a lot of these shows, they was cookie cutter. They was like, oh, we just want to fit you into the show that's already made. And I'm like, no, I'm, what are we going to do? We're going to show you that what we do works. So we're going to do it on our own. With our own money, with our own funds, we driving. I'm driving a Sprinter van. Right. We literally gonna get on feet, and we gonna show you. We blessed enough to have the power of the people, and we gonna show you when we go to them tables. It ain't nothing that you can say, cause now we got concrete evidence that it worked in Atlanta, it worked in New Orleans, it worked in Chicago, Detroit. We moving to all of the cities. So once we get to them tables, I'm putting it down on a piece of paper. Like, look, that's what we've been able to do. Now, what you about to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what's dope though is that this. None of the, the social media or the fame mm -hmm. or the money is changing your integrity as Absolutely a person. Not. 
But I'm letting you know as a black person from the black community, mm -hmm. if you want to go out there and pursue some of them opportunities mm -hmm. and get some of that money, we ain't going to be mad at you. <laughs> we already know that your spirit is right yeah. and, and your core is right. You got a, a, you a got strong a black woman For behind sure. you. Yeah. Bro, get you some of that paper too. Absolutely. Oh, Just, don't get me wrong. Life is good. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. So we only charge big corporations that have a marketing budget, but we charge them well, real right. well. I don't charge no mom and pop shops. I don't charge no restaurants because I want an authentic experience. But when it comes to them corporations, my family got to eat. You yeah. let them know mm -hmm. that, bro, and you stand on that. Absolutely. Ten and, toes. And keep doing your thing, bro. Ten toes. It's Again, like, this is an honor of mine to be, this is crazy. Bruh, yeah, that's crazy. You 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 the talk of the town right now. I don't know if you know this. When I tell you Atlanta is different. <laughs> it's unreal. Different. It's unreal. What, what you mean by different? I'm an Atlanta native, so I love to hear people. When I say different, I mean like y'all are interested in the drama. Real interested. In like, drama? When I say a lot of restaurants or a lot of places that we went to, they'll be like, okay, cool, he don't like the food, so we still gonna go with Atlanta. It's like, I've been waiting for you to tear that motherfucker down. Tear it to the ground, burn it. <laughs> and Twitter had on fire. They're like, man, I've been waiting for, somebody was like, yeah, my baby mama went over there two days ago and they did the same thing to her, tear it down. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. it's like, it's different, the amount of reception that we got here. I will say, the people here, other than the restaurant owners, but the people here have been amazing. Yeah. Been absolutely amazing. That's, That's the thing about That's it. Love. That's the thing that makes this city great is we have so many different people from it's so love. many different places and the people who are from here love it so much mm -hmm. that they try to make sure you have you love an authentic Absolutely. Atlanta yeah. Yeah. experience. I can feel it too because yeah. just going in through the like streets, like I said, I'm driving, I'm in a sprinter, we ain't got no tent. People were running up to the side of the car like, oh, that's key, that's key. Yeah. People were running in the middle of the green lights. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy out here, but I love it. And yeah, to see it, our people, yeah. we in Vegas. Yeah. So we don't get many of us, bro. It's not It's yeah. a fish pond. You get a bunch of everything. You yeah. come here and you see all this melanin. Yeah, all this yeah. melanin. I yeah. said, okay, well, I just, let me get me some property up in here <laughs> yeah, for because... Real. I'm real comfortable, mm -hmm. I tell you that. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it feels like a cookout. That's how we feel today. Like, we just kicking it with our country cousins backstage and just vibing out like it's lit that's how atlanta is like you said especially if you good people you got good character you do good business Absolutely. it ain't nothing like we look out and we love each other and it's like it's inspiring to see other blacks doing things that they love to do and being Absolutely. super dope and successful in it like For yourself sure. i think it just shows the next generation like it's so much more you can do and that's what i learned from growing up in For atlanta sure. like that's what i was getting ready to ask y'all mm -hmm. now it's like all of this is coming so fast. Mm -hmm. like you haven't even had time to, you know what I mean, sit and organize and, sure. and plot and plan. Like, what's next for you and your family, my boy? Uh, whatever God want me to be at, I'm going to be there. Wherever I'm supposed to be, I'm going to be, and I truly believe that. Uh, I can see us in a lot of spaces. I can see us in a fashion space. Uh, I can see us in a TV show space, um, right. movies. I, I really want to set up a food tour to where in every city that we go to, the places that we be in, you can set up like, or you can uh, buy tickets and you automatically get chauffeured to those places. All of those places get all of the funds. We don't take nothing off the top. They get everything. And we just set up a long lasting Keith Lee effect. Man, you know what would be dope? I was just sitting here thinking, what if y'all did like a dinner party mm -hmm. in all these different cities, right? Mm -hmm. Like you find a dope ass chef and have them sponsor a dinner party. Like, That'd be fire. Let That'd people buy crazy. tickets and come in and kick it. What we yeah. doing right now Maybe in every city, we trying to rent out an ice cream truck and just pass out ice cream. That's like when we was in California, we bought out this uh, random vendor's ice cream truck and we just walked around the neighborhood passing out ice cream. So, and then we post where we at. So if you want to come hang out with us, you can hang out with us. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I just want to drive it. You know what uh, ice cream truck I can get? We've been trying to find one since we've been here. I just want to get an ice cream truck, completely buy it out, and just pass it out for free. You've been trying to find an ice cream uh, truck? ice cream truck. Well, let me tell you this Atlanta. Uh, Somebody got one in their backyard. Nah, it's some hood. Oh, Gresham we Road. We got some ice cream trucks. Yeah. Uh -huh. But don't be surprised if they got like a window unit AC hanging out of like cool. a regular van. That's cool. Hey, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> yeah, that's I, cool. No, but I love that as a creative, you always doing things that are like philanthropic and just giving back. 
For sure. That's really dope. Because a I lot of creators it. just doing it, like you said, to get on and thinking about themselves or even just for right. their family. I but. love how it don't affect them. Like, you ain't get yeah. the money. It was like, I'm rich, bitch. Stop yeah. telling me. Like, I didn't even want to give out free ice cream. I didn't even want to come here. I'm not even going to lie to you. I didn't even want to come here. My family was like, they want to go to the One Music Fest. I'm like, I guess we have the One Music Fest. I've never been to a festival. When I tell you, my social anxiety has always been there. So it's yeah. like I've never really like done a lot of crowded areas. But for my family, I'm going everywhere. Bruh. I'm a soldier. That's I'm putting my feet well, around. Whatever it was, man, God worked it out. Absolutely. You're you going to have to get over it because the people love you <laughs> and, and we're sure. following you. For sure. And, and just know we love your family like our family, bro. And That's the love. way you stood up for your family the other week and say you can say whatever you want to about me. Keep my right. family out of this. Right. Man to man, that, that's the biggest love, respect. Bro. And love. keep doing your thing, Keith love. Lee. You stay on his ass and make sure he keep <laughs> Come outside. Ass, keep Thanks. bringing it out. Salute to the Thanks. family that y'all got. I know they over there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, the yeah. whole family over there. Kids is that's out fine. kicking it they tonight at One Music that's Fest. That's love. Bro, the next time you come down here, let, let us take y'all to I one of come. our favorite restaurants. And we'll Say have that. some dinner, lunch, or something like that. How about that. this? So my family, they are, I'm the secret shopper. So my family, they go order my food for me. They make sure that, that they don't know it's me. And when I get my food, I get my food like everybody else. And they come back into the car, I do my review, and then I go in. And maybe I'll talk to them, but more, more like we just leave and they post a video. And they'll be like, oh, he was already here kind of thing? How about we do that? How about okay. you go over oh, no, the pool? Cause and I'm I sit calling the all the restaurants. Don't tell them I'm here. From the time you no, leave, you no, you from the time you leave uh -huh. until you come back, uh -huh. I'm just gonna be like, yeah, bitch, my cousin <laughs> keep coming back. And they're gonna be like, keep who? I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry good. about it. Let my shit not be right. right. Let my shit not be right. <laughs> let my wing be. Let one wing be too little. <laughs> let one. Cause you know they got some few places out here selling a little bit of wings. Again, again, we got some stuff in the vault. But them right. wings like this big, Look. this and they had drenched in buffalo sauce. I don't know what part of the chicken that came from. Me either. I don't know it came from a chicken. Squirrel <laughs> show. <shoulders>. Baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> little baby bird. Hey man, we appreciate y'all stopping through the backwoods lounge and uh, kicking it with us. Yeah. Yes. And we can't wait to see what y'all got coming up. I can't in the wait future. to see this. I'm about to watch yeah. this back a thousand times. <laughs> like ain't no way I was talking to them. <laughs> 85 <laughs> South Show. Keep Lee and family. Love. Love. We out of here. Backwoods backstage. Backwoods backstage. Hell yeah. Thank y'all. That was fire.